but they've come up with a 24-team uh, playoff structure to begin. They've said goodbye to the regular season, and to get his thoughts, we bring in one of the uh, great uh, NHL executives ever uh, in Lou Lamarillo. Lou, welcome. How are you? Uh, very well, Mike, and hopefully uh, you and your family are, are safe and well also during uh, this unprecedented time that we're all living in right now. Lou, everybody's good, thankfully. Uh, how has it been for you? How have you found it? I Well, I've stayed here on Long Island, and uh, as you know, it's, we were in the middle of it, but I, uh, I believe that our governor's done a great job, and we're going in the right direction, and uh, you know, you have to adjust uh, like everybody else, but everything is good, Mike. Thank you. What do you think of, uh, what's your thoughts on the NHL plan? Uh, I support it. Uh, I believe uh, that they've come up uh, with a great solution uh, to a very difficult set of circumstances. And uh, our commissioner, Gary Bettman, and Bill Daly, uh, working uh, with uh, Don Fuhrer, uh, for me, has been seamless. They've worked together. Uh, they've Trump tried to come up with something that uh, is fair. Certainly not everyone is going to like it. All of us have our own individual reasons why you'd like to see something different. But when you look at it for the good of the game, uh, the big picture, the league, uh, the fans today, uh, if we can get something in front of them uh, by uh, TV and radio and have them something to look forward to, I think it's great. And uh We'll find a way to get through all the details that have to uh, be handled at this point. Lou, uh, let's say you get the safety protocols, I'm sure you will, and the sites down and get all that worked out. From a hockey standpoint, being as good at you as you have been at con- uh, constructing a winner, uh, what is going to be the hardest part of getting your team playoff ready in your mind? Well, first of all, certainly, you know, where the players are at uh, as we speak with uh, this pause that we've been in, how much conditioning they've been, uh, you know, uh, and, you know, we won't know that until we get them here. Uh, And also uh, making sure that not only the physical end of it, uh, but they're comfortable with their mind and trying to do everything you can to assure them of what the league has done and the union has done. Uh, they've handled all of that uh, because we know how, how difficult the mind can be sometimes. So trying to get those uh, two in place and, and just getting a single focus uh, that this is an opportunity. Uh, you're in the playoffs, uh, you know, and now it's like a new season. Uh, you're coming back. Everybody has the same chance and same opportunity. Uh, feel good about it. Uh, feel good about yourselves and uh, let's get ready to play. Lou, the, as everyone knows, the Stanley Cup playoffs are as intense and as physical uh, as any sporting event we have in the country. Uh, and it's, you know, it's an w- incredibly exciting sporting event. Um, that being said, do you think the players will be able to put everything behind them and, and put that kind of product on the, on the ice this year? Oh, I believe once the puck drops, Mike, they will. Uh, I think with the uh, protocol and the phases that the – a league has put forward with reference to the preparation as far as uh, leaving the window open so it can slide. And we as general managers and seeing our players when they come back in the first phase, when they can go on the ice without coaches, as we see them in, uh, you know, before training camp starts officially, uh, you know, we'll have a knowledge. And uh, they have not set a date as to, you know, when the first game will be set. Uh, I think that's, a slide, they have a window and when uh, they feel they like to see it, but it could change. So I think they've prepared for everything. Uh, but to answer your question, I will, I think they will be in top shape when the puck is dropped and they will be ready to go. And I think it'll be exciting. Do you think you'll need to make any adjustments to the roster from what would be a normal roster in the postseason? Uh, no, we we will get our players, uh, Mike, who have been injured, uh, you know, at the end of the year back. Uh, they're regulars. Uh, so, you know, I think our training camp will be competitive because we did add a couple of players at the trade deadline. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, uh, and the coaches will have decisions to make, uh, certainly. And it's nice to have decisions. It's not good when you don't have decisions. And 
hopefully the players see uh, that decisions have to be made and they have themselves ready once it starts. We're, not, we're talking with uh, the legendary Lou Lamarillo as we uh, talk about the NHL, which is right now a step ahead of the others in that they now have a plan. They are moving ahead, and they seem to have everybody on the same page, which is something some of the other sports don't have right now. Lou, I look at it when I look at all the different sports, and I see, I think of individual conditioning, mental and physical for the players, then the conditioning for skills that you use on the ice or on the court, and then scrimmaging, uh, and whether you need to scrimmage just among yourselves or do you need outside competition. How much of each of those do you think you need to get ready? Well, I, all of the above, Mike. I think that certainly, uh, you know, once you get back, you get the individual skills, you get them making as many touches as they can with the puck uh, as far as timing goes. Uh, then that is individually and then collectively timing, uh, you know, certainly with traffic out there, uh, the quickness, you have to get the quickness back and then you scrimmage and, uh, and the league sees that. And I think that we will have the opportunity in the last week, uh, to be able to get a couple of exhibition games in, uh, with other participants. Certainly you won't be playing the team that uh, you play, uh, during the, uh, uh, sort of uh, play in round. Uh, but uh, there's a chance of us having an exhibition game or two once we go to the hub site. Uh, I'm hoping that occurs. Uh, and, you know, so to give you, uh, give us uh, a better opportunity to be prepared for when the playoff starts. Do you think the lack of fans will be a factor or not a factor, Lou? Uh, that's a great question. That's a great point. Uh, you know, it's it's like a practice. It's like a closed practice and a scrimmage. Uh, the, the quietness, the enthusiasm and excitement of, of the fans, especially at home uh, or or going down the road, uh, the excitement of fans on the road gets you as much sometimes as, as at home. So that's going to be a, new, a unique experience for everyone, each and every one of the players. And certainly uh, that'll play a factor if you allow it to get in your way or you think about it. Uh, uh, but, you know, it's... Uh, but it's the same for everyone, Mike, so it doesn't make a difference. You know, you wonder how much uh, the crowds clearly get teams revved up. There's no question. I mean, it's just human nature. You wonder if the players can produce that same kind of adrenaline themselves. I'm sure they can, but it's going to be a little different for them, I'm sure. Well, as you prefaced hockey uh, uh, when you spoke earlier, uh, you mentioned about the physicality that happens in the playoffs. The game gets other, up and up a notch or two. Uh, as soon as there's uh, one collision or somebody gets hit, uh, I think that adrenaline will get going a little uh, quite quickly. Do you think this format or anything will give any type of team any kind of edge, Lou? Do you think anybody's got any advantage, of whether it's the way teams are put together right now or uh, how they'll play it at certain hub sites or no fans? Do you think it gives anybody any edge or do you think everybody's on the same page? No, I, I think everybody is on the same page, but the, the key will be how you adjust to all of the distractions that are going to be there because this is uncharted, uh, you know, sort of territory as far as the set of circumstances and, you know, staying in a hub city, uh, playing all the games there, home and away. Uh, you know, if you have home ice for the first game, then you'd have visited the next game. You change the, uh, you know, the goal that you're in. You know, so there will be a little little things that may seem petty, uh, but as long as you don't allow them to be distractions, uh, they won't get in the way. But they're real. Uh, you know, some of the smallest things uh, cause big things to happen or prevent things from happening. Lou, um, we're talking with Lou Lamarillo. The during this pandemic, uh, the companies that were able to, you know move quickly and change on the fly and do the things and adapt and do what they needed to do and still run their businesses. Uh, I'm sure it's the same in sports. Some franchises probably have handled things better than others. What was the hardest thing in a world where everything changed, everything in life changed, everything in business changed, everything in everything changed? Uh, what was the hardest part for you running a franchise? Well, I, I think the uh, most important thing was making everybody realize that health and safety is primary and preface it on just about every conference call you have, 
uh, end to every interaction you have on Zooming or FaceTiming uh, with your personnel because, you know, we're all communicating. We have conference calls every week with different groups, whether it be our scouts, pro, amateur, coaching staff, support staff, office staff, and making sure that that is primary and uh, trying in some way to get, after, you know, after that's understood, to get the focus on what has to be done and not worrying about what they can't control uh, and worrying about what's going to happen tomorrow. Let's deal with what we have at hand today, uh, work at that, and adjust accordingly if there's something we have to change. So I think the, the mental part of the game, but it's all of us, Mike. It's uh, with our families, uh, uh, different uh, you know, children, they worry differently. Uh, they have different, you know, things that concern them. So it's no different, but it's it's trying to keep that 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 mind fresh in, in some way uh, or you know something that you do, whether it's a humorous thing or having a little humor at a time that really uh, there's no humor to be felt. Uh, but you have to feel good. If you don't feel good, you won't get anything done. I'm talking with Lou Lamarillo. Lou, uh, you guys are in the midst of building an arena. Has that slowed uh, your timetable because they had to stop working or maybe it affected economics in some way? Did it impact your timetable at all for the future? No, I, I'm pleased to, uh, and I'm glad you asked that question for our fans. Uh, I'm pleased to say that they're back at work, uh, and because of the weather that we've had, uh, over the last uh, 12 months or so, uh, you know, they've been able to get ahead of schedule. And I'm told from the uh, uh, people in charge of the facility and our ownership that uh, we're still ahead. Uh, we'll be on time unless there's some unforeseen pause. But this past pause uh, did not cause us uh, any major delays that cannot be overcome. So that's great news. And uh, we're looking forward to the facility. Uh, that's there, and as I told, told someone that, that, that seeing the plans of uh, uh, the Belmont Arena, uh, the best way I can describe it, it's going to have a, an atmosphere of the Coliseum, uh, but the feel of a brand new building because of the way they built it. They built it for a, a hockey game. Uh, great, looking forward to it. It's going to be, and uh, the people around in the neighborhood or in, the, or, or in Nassau County are completely are very excited by it. I mean, they really are. They're, they're, they're very excited. I know people are very excited about the building and the future for the Islanders there. It's going to be very good for that area. There's no question. Um, uh, so there's nothing major for you guys, right? I mean, most of the stuff now is little. No, I know there's still safety protocols, but and everyone still wants to say if, but there's no real major hurdles for hockey to jump over, right, as far as getting together, right? You guys are pretty much on the same page. Labor, management, everybody seems to be on the same page in hockey, right? Uh, 100%. Certainly, you know, with the little asterisk that the people would like, some people would like to see this different or that different, uh, but the, the uh, support of this going forward, when you take a, pick, a step back and take yourself out of your individual situation and look at it for the league and the fans and the players, and that's why the union and, and the NHL, to me, have done an exceptional job, job of working together and coming with a common good in the end. Uh, so, no, the only thing right now is just making sure uh, all the, everyone is healthy Everyone is still continuing to do and being safe with uh, what is necessary, the mask, the testing, all of the things that you cannot relax on. And as you know, coming from the area here where we're at, uh, you know, we know how important that is and what a role that played in us being in the situation we are today. And uh, Governor has done a great job in bringing us uh, to this point from where we were. Uh, I, I believe in a, a quicker uh, sort of time frame than I would have thought when it first transpired and started to spike uh, at some of the highest levels. So in saying that, uh, no, uh, I don't think there's anything major at this point. Uh, but as we know, it's a fluid, it's a fluid set of circumstances. Well, listen, thanks for a couple of minutes. Good luck. Stay safe. Uh, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Lou, very much. And Mike. Yes. Mike, while I have the forum, I'd yes. like to, with your fans, thank uh, all the first responders and 
all the medical physicians and all the people out there for the job they've done. And I know they cheer the athletes and they appear to be heroes, but the real heroes are these people. And we cannot ever forget that, that it's because of them that our families are safe and we can't forget them today. We can't forget them tomorrow. And I want to thank them, uh, you know, on behalf of myself personally and our organization. And I appreciate you giving you time uh, during this forum. Thanks, uh, Lou. Well said. Thank you very much and be well. Good to talk to you. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Lou Lamarillo.